played under a number of different managers, uh, inevitably in your playing career, in both Scotland and England. Is there one of those managers on whose example you draw uh, now that you become a manager yourself? No, I think it's important that you, you draw on experiences with managers. Uh, and not all good points, might I add. You know, there's a lot of things that they did or how they conducted themselves that actually shapes and forms you to go the other way. Uh, so all experiences help to, to develop you in, in this uh, industry of being a manager. Obviously, I've been fortunately recently to work under Dougie and Lenny Lawrence, who, for me, uh, there's been a lot of things that, that I've taken on board and I see as important that, that actually reflect me as a person and it's down to your values. You know, what you see is important, what that then forms your principles. And, and then again, you hope that, that through your coaching, uh, that the players can reflect what you are and, and that's my aim as a coach. You now have virtually two weeks managing uh, Notts County. What about the job uh, in the limited time so far that you've had, Jimmy? What about the job has surprised you? I think even though you prepare as much as you can when you're not in the role, uh, everything surprises you. I think the, the key factor for me is time management. You know, the best time is that two hours in the morning, two hours in the afternoon, when no one can contact you and you're on that training field. And you're actually doing what you're paid to do in terms of preparing the team to hopefully go and get a successful uh, performance and result on a Saturday. So it's that time management where uh, as things stand, everybody wants five minutes of your time, uh, everybody wants that guidance, as opposed to just the players, so so that's something that I'm, I'm becoming accustomed to quickly. When you finish playing, and you finish early on account of injury, uh, you did something really quite different to many other f people coming out of being players, and you set up an academy in Spain, Costa Unida Academy, uh, in Spain for under eights to under nineteens. How's it going? Yeah, it's going very well. Still, I manage it from here, believe it or not, amongst many other hats that I have. But uh, when I retired, and, and it's, a, it's a blow, a shock at 29, just before you're 30, uh, when you felt you were going to play until you're 35, 36, I felt a little bit sorry for myself. So I went, uh, fortunate enough to have a place over in Spain, and I went for a six month holiday and stayed six years. <laughs> Uh, and during that time, uh, you know, that's where I, I engage with the young community there, because there's a lot of expats that live in the area, and that's what uh, pushed me to, to set something up, uh, to try and give them an opportunity with professional clubs back in England. And, and when I first started it, it's funny how people react to you being a foreigner uh, as such. Uh, I only had 30 players that would play for me, <laughs> and they were either Scandinavian or English. None of the Spanish would come to me. They have a phrase, Giri, which means it's short for Estranjero, which is foreigner. I'm not playing for the foreigner, I'm not playing for the foreigner. So, so you have to break down those barriers. We're, we're at the moment, we have 200 players and 156 are Spanish uh, within the club. So, so it's a real uh, turnaround there with seven having signed professionally at different clubs, different levels. And the first one actually about six weeks ago making his La Liga debut uh, for Malaga. So, so it's real pleasing. It doesn't make any money, it costs me money, but the pleasure you get out of, of giving kids opportunity uh, in this great industry that sometimes, with all the politics, doesn't get looked at, is a real drive for me. Can you imagine any one of those players in the academy coming here and joining you on the professional staff at Notts County? Well, obviously, different age groups, we have quality of player there. But emotion isn't involved in it for me, Colin. If they're good enough and they're better, then they would look at it. My first aim, and, and most importantly, is, is kids from Nottingham. I think you've got to make sure that you give the kids in this area where you're from the first and best opportunity to play for your local club. And it's a big drive for me that, where we've got to make sure that we are hot on the heels, looking to get the best talent in this area in the building before we look outside of it. I was just going to say that what you've just said there, Jamie, will be of enormous pleasure to Notts County people. Um, I've been here long enough to remember when uh, Notts County got to the fourth round of the FA Youth Cup with the likes of Jeff Astle and Tony Haitley in the side. 
more recently being at Wembley with the likes in playoff finals of Tommy Johnson and Mark Draper. Not have always been at their best with good young local talent. I think when you mentioned about playing for your country where you get that feeling because you're born there. Yeah. Uh, I think if you can play for your local club that you get a similar sense with the hair standing up in the back of your neck when you play for them. So if we can capture that and bring that, then that enthusiasm, that passion, that desire, which I think must be part of any winning team, it's, it's easier to discover, if you like. You've been described, I don't know with what justice, but you've been described as a disciplinarian. Is that how you see yourself? And more particularly, is that how the players see you, do you think? <laughs> You know, I can test that word. That word obviously provokes negativity. Yeah. Uh, you know, if working from a framework, having boundaries, having guidelines and someone to rely on to help you along is classed as a disciplinarian, then I am. Because that's my aim, that's my job and, and role. Uh, and I think if there's no boundaries and there's no consequences for actions and there's no guidance, then you have anarchy, which, which doesn't sit well with me and it doesn't bring success. Um, all these fans, Notts County people here, would want to know, they wouldn't forgive me for not asking you, what's your realistic assessment of Notts County's prospects this season? Where can Notts County finish this season? That's what they want to know. Yeah, obviously there's aspirations for infrastructure where we're at. At the beginning of the season, the aim was promotion. And I'm not deluded to think that the fans don't want that as soon as possible. I do too. Progression is a key factor on a weekly basis to implement what I see as the way forward to gain what, what everybody's ultimate goal is, is to play in the higher league. Where that takes us or time scale, I, I'm not going to be Mystic Meg or, or make any wild predictions, you know, I want to be realistic and, and as honest and as fair as I can be. Uh, so therefore, it's the old cliche of let's get wins, let's keep winning, let's build momentum and then with the other variables because remember we've got teams that are above us with more points at the moment so we're relying on how they react over the coming months to affect where we'll finish. And before we finish, um, what are your memories? I dug in my records to find this, I might tell you. What are your memories of turning out of Meadow Lane here as a Brentford substitute? in a 2-2 draw on the 31st of August, 2002. <laughs> <laughs> it's funny, that, that season, when I came back down uh, from Scotland to Brentford uh, via a close and confidant of Steve Coppel, and I started the season, we played Huddersfield away, we were favourites to go up that year, and I scored one of my six goals in my 400 appearances against Huddersfield. And then uh, my temperament, shall we say, resulted in me having a knee injury, so I never actually played uh, the rest of the month. We did a few dodgy results, and on the Friday, Wally Downs, the manager, says, how are you feeling? I don't have trained on the Friday, I haven't trained. Yeah, I'm okay. Travel, travel, just being around amongst the players, having influence in the dressing room. I won't play you. 2-0 down at half time, you, get changed, you're on. So, uh, up against it and we nicked a 2-2 draw yes. from, uh, yes. right, um, from that and we did steal it because we were under the cosh for the full game so that's the only experience I've actually had at the medal and hopefully it'll be slightly different today uh, Everybody here will echo that everybody is hoping that having achieved a win at Crawley in your first match in charge that you achieve a second win in your second match in charge and they would also want me to say, and I do, a big thank you for making yourself available Jamie, thank you <laughs>